also with the paper-based process, there's no way to integrate that directly with the CAD data. You know, you can certainly print drawings out. You can organize that in a folder. Um, however, two days go by, that document can be out of date. With paper-based processes, it's very time-consuming. You've got to organize the information. You've got to manually uh, make sure that things are happening when they're supposed to, things are being filled out when they're supposed to be filled out. So there's a lot of manual processes, again, that are involved in that. For managerial oversight, you know, if a manager is trying to figure out what state the ECO is currently at, if he doesn't have direct contact with those individuals, it's very difficult for that person to find out what's going on with the change order. Uh, the other thing that can happen is ineffective documentation. I could potentially pull the wrong version of a part, and now I'm making a change or marking up a drawing on wrong information, so I'm wasting a lot of time. So those are, those are just some issues that, that can come about from a paper-based process. Some of the benefits to a uh, change order or electronic change order process through vault manufacturing is there's a secure single point of access. There aren't multiple applications needed to be able to manage that change. There's one location that I log into with my credentials so that I can get to that change order. Also, vault manufacturing is scalable. So depending upon how small or how large your organization is, you're going to be able to scale the types of features and the configuration of the product to your needs. It also facilitates collaboration. So we can capture the types of communications that are going on during the change order process, and there's a historical reference of that information. There's also a direct correlation or direct link to the CAD data so that when I want to apply a change order to a file, all the related data that's, that's going on with that assembly, all the parts, the drawings, any specifications, documents, et cetera, are all going to be able to easily be gathered into my change order so that I can effectively be able to manage those changes. Another piece of information that gets lost a lot of time are the drawing markups. The markup might happen from the, uh, the shop floor. It might happen from production, manufacturing, wherever that markup is going to take place. If it's not being diligently organized or managed by somebody, it could be lost, and then changes cannot be made to a particular drawing. So with vault manufacturing, we have an electronic drawing markup area where we can apply those markups, and again, they're organized in one single location. For managers that need to understand where a current change order is at, what the state of it is, is it being approved, in review, being worked on, that individual has the ability to log into the system and see exactly what's going on with the change order. You're always going to be able to get the most recent revision to a particular piece of documentation. That could be a drawing, it could be a specification, a PDF, whatever needs to be managed by that change order, with the vaulting system in place, you're always going to get the latest and greatest information. One thing that you can't have with a paper-based process is notifications. It's a manual process, so your notification might be that the change order is routed from one desk to another. Well, with vault manufacturing, there's three levels of notification. There's going to be a work status, so I know exactly the change orders that I'm responsible for. There's going to be email notification, so I'm going to get emailed through Outlook or whatever email program you're using that something's going on or that I'm part of an engineering change order process, and I can log in and see what that's going to be. Uh, there's also a little um, thing that shows up in the lower right-hand corner, much like your email comes in through Outlook. You get a little warning or, or notification stating that something new has happened, and then you can take some sort of action based on that. There's routings that are created for this, so that if I've got uh, predetermined routings for a particular change order, I can, I can set that up, but I can also customize it further. You know, maybe during a change order process, somebody was recently hired. I can customize that routing, add that individual, and now they're part of the process. And like what Stephanie was talking about earlier, there's a reduction in paper. Well, with the electronic drawing markups being organized in the change order, that reduces those drawing markups. And it also reduces the amount of, of paper just with the change order itself. So those are some of the benefits that, that can be achieved through vault manufacturing. What types of things can you control by a change order? Well, we might have customer specifications, development documents, engineering documents. Those can be drawings. Those can be Word documents, Excel. Um, there's also the CAD models. We've got parts, assemblies, and all those relationships that are going on. 
There could be man, uh, manufacturing work instructions, quality documents, and service requirements. All these types of things can be managed by a change order. So with vault manufacturing, there's a couple different areas we can focus on. Well, one, it's going to be able to securely store and manage all of your engineering information in a single location. And that, that would not only include your CAD data, but all of the collateral documentation that's related to that. Uh, vault manufacturing also helps you design, engineer, and manufacture teams, improve the reuse of design data, as well as collaborate and share digital, digital prototyping information. So it allows you and, and it enables multi-site locations. It also has advanced functionality to help design department track engineering changes, manage bill of materials, and promote collaboration through the integration of manufacturing business systems. So if you're linking your bill of materials into an ERP system, you have the ability to create that link and also have certain triggers that will allow you to synchronize bill of materials between vault manufacturing and your ERP system based on some condition. That could be the release of an engineering change order so that it will automatically update the bill of materials. It can also help reduce the time spent organizing files, avoid costly mistakes with, with the software, providing a more efficient design revision and release process that can quickly be deployed or customized to your comp customer or your company's unique requirements. So those, that's just a little overview of vault manufacturing. Uh, what I want to do is show you the back end. This is the configuration area for vault manufacturing change orders. It's a very simple, easy to use interface. And it allows you to do different things with the change order process that are relevant to your system or your company. You can see here that I can do, I can create what's called former control, or I can have so that, it, so that I don't have at will changes where users are just going in and making changes at will. I can turn on some functionality that prevents that type of action. You can create different, different types of areas within your workflow. In this particular thing, I can add an additional checker state to my workflow so that individuals that need to check drawings would be able to log in and be functional at that particular stage. Down here at the bottom, there's three areas that will allow me to configure the change orders themselves. I have a routing definition where I can have different types of predefined routings. And then individuals that are part of that, that routing will have responsibilities. You can see here there might be an individual on the shop floor that needs to be a reviewer. They need to be able to log in with the change order and see what's going on. They may not need to approve that process, but they just need to see what's going on with a particular change order. You can see there are different types of roles that are, that are available over here. We've got responsible engineer, approver, change administrator, et cetera. Um, you can also create different types of change order properties. And these properties, if you've ever done a change order uh, through a paper-based system, all the data that you fill out, the check boxes, the things you circle, uh, the title, the description, et cetera, this is where we would customize that area and create your electronic change order. An example here would be like reason for change. You can see over here on the right-hand side that if I were to select that in the change order, I'm going to be uh, shown a list that I need to choose from, and that list is customizable based on your needs. Um, some companies have multiple change order processes. It might be ECO, ECR, ERO, ERN. Any of those types of change order processes that your company uses, we can cater this, this process to. So that gives you a little idea of the back end of how it's configured. When you create a change order, there are several different areas or tabs that's going to organize the data relevant to that change order. The general tab is the first one that you would fill out, and that's going to have some basic information like the title, the description, and then those properties I was talking about earlier. This is the information relevant to this particular change order. And we'll get into this a little deeper later in the demonstration, but that could be a combination of a list. It could be free text, so you can type in things like the cost of the change. There could be yes, no questions that need to be answered. Um, again, it's, it's customizable to your process, and again, it's in one location so that you can make those changes and apply that information in the general tab. The items area is going to be the items associated with the change order. They could be parts, assemblies, documents. Anything that needs to be controlled by that change order is organized in the items tab. We'll get into a little deeper uh, and see that information live in the presentation. The comments area is going to summarize the decisions for the change order in the form of comments, att attachments, and markups. If you've ever done any type of discussion on the internet, 
there's that collaboration that goes on where you see a particular post and then a reply to that post is indented. The comments area has that ability to create that collaborative effort and organize that in one location. The files area is going to be all the related files. So if I bring in a part into the items tab, the related files would be the drawings, could also be any specifications, or any other information that's related to that particular file. 